Oh, for crying out loud. Hey, Sean. Yeah, I, uh, this is the second, this happened last time too, where uh, the streaming software actually just completely crashed, and now for some reason I'm having a hard time getting the image to be large enough. It's really messed up. Like, I guess I'll just do that, but... It's really weird. I am not sure why it does that. It, it's never done it until uh, the other day. And this is the second time, so I guess at least it's been consistent. Um, but I'm gonna have to figure that out, because that, that is, that's gonna, that's gonna be pissing me off real quick, like. Um, I feel like this happened when there was an update to the version of that software. The good thing, if you can call it that, is that it really only, uh, the stream craps out. But, um, nothing actually happens to my game. Like, my, my flight continues on, just as it was before. So I don't really lose anything, I just end up with two videos instead of one. And of course the stream gets interrupted, but... Which is not the end of the world. But I do wish I knew uh, why Streamlabs OBS just uh, closes out. The, the additionally extra annoying thing is I cannot just turn it back on. I have to reboot the computer. Which makes the whole thing take even longer. And it's super annoying because it means I have to turn everything else off and everything else has to come back on. Um, most annoyingly, the... Uh, the actual VR camera image that you guys are looking at gets lost and I have to restart that again. So I'm gonna try something actually. I feel like I feel like when I have this capture software open, I feel like I like the colors better than this. But maybe it won't crash when I just do it like this. So it's a little bit more vibrant too vibrant, really. I kind of wish it was like somewhere in between the two, but... Oh well. It is what it is. Let's see if we can uh, continue here and speed up our sim rate just a wee bit. Oh, let's get our heading uh, locked in. We'll switch back to heading mode.
Uh, just get things moving along a little bit more here. So we have uh, beautiful weather for flying, but nothing too exciting to look at. So we'll get to this next waypoint and we'll see what we do from there. We'll probably keep speeding things up a little bit here. Keep speeding things along. It's very weird. The only reason I even knew the stream was off because I looked it down at the chat here and it said, Chuck, one place is offline. I'm like, w w what do you mean I'm offline? I don't want to be offline. I was online and live and things were going well. So that's the other thing that's a little bit more difficult to notice, actually, when this kind of stuff happens because I've got the headset on. I'm having an okay time. I'm actually, like, as far as the actual flight, things have been going smooth in the flight. I shouldn't really complain. It's just the little the streaming stuff that's being a little bit bothersome. So, all in all, like, the, the main thing of what I'm doing here is, is actually going quite well. Okay, and we're about to make a turn, so let's switch back to nav mode. Let the autopilot make the turn for us. I mean, that it seems a little bit blown out, but it actually is somewhat accurate to what I'm seeing. I guess I can. I'm just gonna have to play around with some color correction stuff on that a little bit. Zero contact Miami Center on one two four decimal seven. Enjoy your afternoon. Center on one two four decimal seven. Chalk 280. So funny, we're flying to Cuba, we've been handed off to Miami Center. Chalk 280, good afternoon at 6,000 feet. Chalk 280, good afternoon. Squawk 4336. We are doing that already. Let's uh, synchronize our heading. Let's um, switch back to heading mode, and we'll speed up the sim radio again. Two, three. We'll just get a little bit closer here. I think this is our last major leg of our approach to Cuba here. We'll fly a little bit off course, it's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll get ourselves back on track before we get to our next waypoint. ATC's gonna yell at us in a minute, but that's okay. I don't even know what the score is in the Canucks game, Sean. I'm not sure I want to know. I'm very surprised that ATC has not yet yelled at us. We are quite a bit off track. Let's get that adjusted. Oh, look at this little island here. 12 seconds, you know what? That actually does seem quite long for the first time ever doing that. 12 seconds is pretty impressive. Because if you count out 12 seconds out loud, and you imagine that you're actually airborne for that, when nobody else had ever been airborne, that's pretty cool. Oh, you know, at least to stop the bleeding, 6-2 isn't so bad. It's a bad loss, but it was... 
They were down 5-1, to one, like, not even halfway through the game, so I was expecting the worst, you know? 6-2 is, uh, is, it's just a bad loss, but it's not the end of the world. <laughs> So what do we got left here on this leg? We have, oh, 24 minutes on this leg, really? Seems like a lot. ETA, 1815. Okay, well, so basically uh, 25 minutes. So this is pretty much, this leg, I guess, is going to take us pretty much all the way to our approach. No, the Leafs bandwagon is full enough. Thank you very much. Rumpo gives me crap all the time for not being supportive enough of the Leafs, but you have to understand, I live in the rest of Canada, and it's, um, I, I realize the Leafs are the biggest team and the biggest market and all that stuff, <clears throat> but yeah, the rest of us are pretty much like, no, we don't want to hear about the Leafs. I hear enough about the Leafs. I'm good. I'm politely accepting of your guys' love for the Leafs. How about that? <laughs> I understand, and I think if I lived there, it would be a different story. I don't even follow the Canucks all that closely, to be honest, these days. Like, uh, I, I followed them much more closely back when life was normal, and normal was me driving to work for an hour every day and listening to nothing but sports radio. And when I also used to go to, like, I don't know, 10 or 12 Canucks games every season, you know, nowadays, of course, that's all changed, for now at least, so... Uh, I like following them. I, I, I check the results afterwards and stuff. I don't, I don't watch very many games either. Mostly because for some reason I feel like I am a bad luck charm. Whenever I watch the Canucks play, they tend to play horribly. Okay, let's do one more bit of acceleration here. Got a fair bit of clouds ahead of us there. This could make things interesting. We see a bit of land on our left there. That's already part of Cuba. Oh, there seems to be a lot of weather over where we're going. I'm not sure I like that. Let's see if we can see anything in our weather radar here. It's weird, we don't actually see anything. Oh, radar on. Display weather. There's the weather radar. Yep, there's definitely clouds ahead of us. In case that wasn't obvious. Scan mode vertical, and it's just above us for the most part. We're gonna fly through it. We are going to fly through it. I find I have a love-hate relationship with most professional sports teams these days. No matter what I'm paying attention to, I, I paid attention to the Vancouver Whitecaps in the MLS for a while. 
um, or still do, but uh, they've gone through so many ups and downs, and it's been so weird and so crappy and so many bad management decisions, you know, at least, of course, in my opinion, sitting here on the back seat coaching stuff, but as one does. Um, paid a lot of attention to the Blue Jays there a few years ago when they were doing really well, and then, of course, uh, that all went sort of belly up for a while, and then now they've got some, some good young players, and, but I haven't paid any attention since the pandemic started, and every once in a while I come across an athletic uh, headline, and it's like, oh, the, the Blue Jays signed this ace pitcher, and I'm like, huh. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if that's good for the team. If this is a, if this is a good signing, is that what they need? I, like, I'm, I'm pretty detached from it. I imagine that once, uh, the, whenever the world goes back to normal, um, Chalk two eight zero I'll pay more attention again. Center on one three three decimal seven. Have a good afternoon. Center on one three three decimal seven. Chalk two eight zero. Venice Center, I said. Chalk two eight zero at six thousand feet. Chalk two eight zero. Good afternoon. Squawk four three three six. Right through this bit of a cloud here. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the outside air temperature. It looks like these are all sort of fairly sporadic clouds, so we'll probably be fine. So now I feel compelled every once in a while to look over and see if frickin' the stream is still going, but... Life seems busy and sports seem to take a backseat for the most part. Yeah, I feel like sports are one of those things that... Especially spectator sports, you know, watching. Um, it's one of the first things to go when things get busy. Uh, before the pandemic, I actually started playing on a, a little rec league soccer team for about two and a half years. And that was a lot of fun. We were terrible. But it was quite a lot of fun. And, you know, more fun than just watching sports. So. I tend to, I mean, you know, I, I, most of my entertainment time is spent doing stuff like this. Or playing uh, video games. Or, you know, doing something that's a little bit more social. Um, you know, years ago when I was single and there was no pandemic, I'd spend a lot of time watching sports games, have a buddy over, have some beers and a pizza kind of thing, you know. But, um, life goes on, we get older, things change, time becomes more precious, time gets spent on other more important things. My Apple Watch is congratulating me. I've reached my stand-up goal. Apparently I've been standing, or I just stood up. I don't know what it's thinking half the time. So we don't have much further to go. We have about 10 minutes or so until we're going to be putting ourselves down on the ground. And it looks like the weather is going to make things a little bit interesting. Yeah, except that uh, you're, you're absolutely correct. You're getting old when your watch is happy that you were standing up. But how do you think it makes me feel when I didn't stand up and it still thinks I did? So is it like you moved your arm above your heart for the first time in an hour and a half? Congratulations. That We'll count that as a stand-up. I don't know. I think it's just actually the, <laughs> the tracking's not so great. Otherwise, I'm a big fan of my Apple Watch, actually. So we'll have to 
go right through that cloud cover here. Ordinarily, I would probably try to descend below it, but we'll just we'll just uh, we'll just let ATC do its thing. It's not like we can't fly through a little bit of clouds. I do wish that ATC would navigate you around uh, weather. That's one thing it doesn't really do. I don't think I think that's because it doesn't know. Like the ATC application doesn't really know about the weather in the game. So, because I, I wish it would do that and say, like, you know what, you're gonna go down, you know, two thousand feet below this. Contact Havana Center on one two zero decimal two five. Enjoy your afternoon. Center on one two zero decimal two five. Chalk two eight zero. Havana Center. Oh, that's what we want. Chalk two eight zero. Good afternoon at six thousand feet. Chalk two eight zero. Good afternoon. Squawk four three three six. I mean, we're basically above the clouds here still. We're fine. We're just going to be scraping through a couple of them ahead of us there, I think. But otherwise, we're actually clearing them for the most part, which is nice. I like flying just above the clouds, and you've got, like, these big pillars just to either side of you. It's like flying through, I don't know, these are, like, big foam bubbles, especially when you're over the ocean. <laughs> or big snow cushions. altimeter check. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to switch from Streamlabs OBS to just the, the, the base OBS software. It's just a, it's going to sound like techno babble there, Sean, but it actually has a couple of features that I like and that I think will help me make this a little bit easier. I don't know. I just, I do not like the stream software just crashing and then me having to restart the computer. That is not acceptable. I do not know what's causing it. Uh, I do not feel like trying to figure it out. I think I'm just going to change it to a different piece of software that should do the same thing for us. And maybe that's a little bit more stable because it doesn't have some of the other things on top of it. I think the only thing that it really that I'm getting out of Streamlabs right now is the notifications, and I don't really need those because I'll just I'll get them in the chat here. I don't really see them anyways when I'm in VR. And when I stream for Shack News, I don't see them there because I'm not logged into their Twitch account, so not really necessary there. I don't need any of that stuff. 
So I think that will be the, the project to test this week. And Sean Rumpel will tell you this, but I'm never satisfied with my technology stuff. The reason that things go wrong for me so many times is because I can't leave them alone. I just have to always tinker, tinker, tinker. Chalk 280, contact Havana approach on 119 decimal 35. Enjoy your afternoon. Approach on 119 decimal 35, chalk 280. Okay, let's talk to approach. We're getting closer. Hand it off from center to center to approach. Chalk 280, good afternoon. 6,000 feet. You know a tech guy that can help me? That's good to know. Did they not hear me? 119er decimal 35. Chalk 280 at 6,000 feet. Chalk 280, good afternoon. There she is. Okay. All right. Well, you know, all I want is for the stream software not to not to die halfway through a stream. There are worse things to crash, like the simulator itself, but it's still not very pleasant. It still takes time away from me, and it's, it's frustrating. So I will continue the never-ending pursuit for perfection. Well, that's quite pretty down there. I guess that would be the, the north coast of Cuba. I wonder if we're going to get to see much of Havana or not. I'm not sure exactly where the airport is in relation to the city. Hopefully we'll get to see something. Of course, we've got the cloud cover to deal with here as well, but... Um, should get we should get a look at something and it means I don't even know if you if you knew, if you've seen this Sean but um, it means that I get to put some extra travel stickers on the on the door there it's hard to see probably on the stream but uh, every country I land in, I slap another country, like a travel sticker, on the side of the airplane. Chalk to eight zero, descent across a fill at flight level zero three zero, then descend via the fill tree arrival to 2,000 feet altimeter two nine oh nine oh two at Jose Marti International. Descend to 3,000 feet, chalk to eight zero. Chalk to eight zero, maintain 2,000 feet. Yeah, yeah, 2,000. Maintain 2,000 feet, chalk to eight zero. So, all right, it is uh, time for our approach. We're actually going all the way down to 2,000, which is good because my thing's broken again, so I can only go in increments of 1,000 for some reason. Let's pull back on the throttle here a fair bit. I'm going to maintain around 240 knots. We don't really want to go any faster than that. Uh, I believe our approach is through AFL, so once we get to AFL, we'll enable the approach mode. Oh, come on, hourglass. Thank you. You're allowed to go on the hourglass thing for like a second or two. It is going to look like a NASCAR car with all the decals. Well, they're, f they're fairly small stickers, and I I'm trying to think how many I've got on there right now. Probably somewhere between 15 and 20. Um, so it's, and there's 194 stops I think I'm making on this trip. So there's quite a bit of room, and the stickers are pretty small. But I actually, this is not my idea, I saw somebody do this on Reddit, and I was like, that is a phenomenal idea. That is really cool, a really cool way to sort of commemorate. Wilco, Chalk280. It's a really cool little thing to do. Uh, you know, to, to kind of track it. It's cool. I've also got a, a, a website um, where I'm tracking the flights. They're tracked automatically. And, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of nice. I'm, I'm hoping that by the end when I finish this, I'll have this really nice long line drawn through every country on the globe. That's kind of my hope. Um, okay, what do we got here? Looks like it's a bit of rain below us, actually. These look like rain clouds. Okay, I'm going to enable the approach mode. 
dann. That definitely looks a little rainy outside. I wonder what the eight zero clear for Rav Approach Runway two four contact tower on one one eight decimal one. Have a good afternoon. Tower on one one eight decimal one, truck two eight zero. Chalk two eight zero for two thousand feet. Chalk two eight zero, good afternoon. Oh, it's getting bumpy. Walk four three three six, continue R N eight to runway two four. Call when established on final. We'll call when established on final. Chalk two eight zero. Chalk two eight zero, this is Marty. That's right. For some reason, they don't need me to acknowledge that one thing. Request. That's the one thing that they don't want me to to mention. For some reason, it's weird. Okay, so we are on our approach. We've been cleared. We're definitely we're going through some rain. I saw some raindrops on the windshield there for a moment. Just one rainy cloud. Um, we should be getting below the glide slope here. I don't know what the actual actual uh, ground altitude is. It looks like we are closer than 2,000 feet to the ground. That much is for sure. It looks like at the horizon there, those, those look like runways, perhaps. Um, we've still got one waypoint to go before we're on final. So at the moment, things are looking okay. That looks like a city over there on that side. Oh yeah, well there's some pretty big highways right below us here. <laughs> okay, I've got the runway in sight at this point. We look like we're below the glide slope, which is good, because we'll move, we should be able to capture it at some point soon here. <laughs> we've got a fair bit of crosswinds here, 20 knot crosswinds. Oof. That's why we're coming in at this angle. If you're wondering why we're flying at this angle, it's because we got a 20 knot crosswind. It's ugly. Let's get some flaps. Let's watch our speed here. We don't want to slow down too much because we don't want to lose our maneuverability. We've captured the glide slope. It's very good. I'm going to go gear down. Chalk 280 on final to runway 24. Chalk 280, winds are calm, clear to land runway 24. Winds are calm, my ass. Clear to land runway 24, Chalk 280. Chalk 280, winds are calm, clear to land runway 24. Okay, I guess I don't have to repeat to acknowledge that either. Um, you can see on the, the, the glass here that that green thing is our target, and we're coming in at that angle because of this nasty, nasty crosswind. Okay, it's time for uh, time for full flaps. Raindrops hitting the windshield. I don't know how well that comes across in the stream, but I can. Uh, I saw a few just running by us here. Okay. Keeping an eye on the speed. My foot's on oh, foot. My foot's my feet uh, on the pedals. Winds are calm in the tower. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Open a window. Have a look outside. This is not calm. Um, okay, we'll be ready to disengage the autopilot. Hopefully, not too soon. So this is still 12, 12 knots. So it's not quite as bad as it was when they told us it was calm. So maybe it is. Going to keep calming down here. Jose Marti International in Havana, Cuba. Oh, lightning. Wonderful. It looks very wet over there. Disengage the autopilot. Oh, holy shit. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, boy. Oh, this is going to be one of the more interesting landings I've ever put down. 
Oh my, I didn't realize how much the autopilot was helping us there. Woo! Fortunately, it is a long runway, so we can take our time here. Coming in pretty steep here, I feel like. We've got loads of runway, so we've, we're just going to try to get down gently. Chalk 280 exit runway when able. Sure thing. I haven't landed yet, but I'll do that as soon as I've landed. Ooh. All right. Definitely did bounce us around a bit, but we made it. My heart rate. Actually, that's a good question. I should. Oh, 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 wait. Heart rate. Uh, it's slightly elevated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the rain on the windshield, though. Isn't that pretty? That's totally worth it. Amazing. Well, let's get our landing lights off, taxi lights on. Oh, that looks awesome. I don't know if you can get much of a sense of this on the stream. I'm actually going to have a peek out over there and see. Oh, yeah. No, it looks all right on the stream, too, for the rain. But in VR, like, the raindrops look like real raindrops. Chalk 280, clear of active. Chalk 280, clear of active. Is there nobody here that wants to talk to me? We'll just go find ourselves a place. Chalk 280, request taxi to the gate. Well, I guess maybe they Chalk went... Chalk 280, oh. taxi to gate 9 by a taxiways Alpha Delta. Taxi to gate 9 via taxiways Alpha Delta. Chalk 280. Chalk of course. 280, taxi to gate 9. Yes. Roger. Chalk 280. What runway... What taxiway is this? Alpha. This is K. We want Alpha Delta. I have a feeling Delta is behind us. We're going to go take a look. We'll find it. I'm actually going to go look for this gate. So that was Kilo. Uh, it usually goes alphabetically, so if this next one here is uh, Lima, then we're going the wrong way. Of course, we basically have to come to a stop so that I can even see this. Uh, I believe that is Lima. It's hard to see through the rain. I'm going to cheat and go outside. That is a Lima. Okay. We'll turn around. You should, yes, it would be your job to bring up the chart, check on the map, you know. If you were sitting in the same room, I could actually give you like an iPad with, uh, with this stuff. That's what I do, would do if I didn't have the VR headset on. I would grab my iPad and I've got an app on there and it shows me where I am on this airport and where the gates are and where the taxi ways are and all that stuff it's just that again that's the one downside with the VR headset I, I can't really do that I can totally bring in the other app inside here but it uh, it's complicated enough as it is so I try not to mess with it too much so this is Kilo It's definitely a, a large airport, so what's this? Is that Charlie? That's Charlie, okay. 
Who knows what they've done with the uh, the numbering here? The lettering. I'm hoping that the next one is going to be Delta. Or maybe this was... Yeah. So, I mean, that looks like there's a bunch of gates over there. So, I think we're just going to... We're going to guess that this here is Delta. Hello, the rain, man. That looks like a D. That is Delta. I'm sure you can't make that out on the stream. I can barely make it out with my eyes in the, in the headset. But this is Delta. And, of course, I have no idea. The gates aren't, I don't think, are numbered. Um, but we're going to pick one of the gates over there straight ahead, essentially. And, and that's where we're going to park. Unless we can see, like... Somebody standing out here. I'm gonna try to follow some yellow lines here, and let's grab the one of the gates here at the top. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are the gates around the corner? Sure are. Seven. Eight. And there is no nine. <laughs> okay. We're going to take this last gate here. And that's where we're going to park. This is not the... Uh, man, the weather in the Bahamas was much nicer than the weather here in Cuba. It's raining cats and dogs. Okay. There we go. Let's acknowledge the master alarm for the parking brake. Let's get our lights off. Throttle into low idle. And that will do it for this flight. Sorry again for having this be another two-part flight because OBS crashed. Streamlabs, rather. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, hope you enjoyed the flight. I know I did. Um, there's a nice view of our TBM 930 sitting here at the gate in Havana, Havana, Cuba. And we will pick it up next. I don't remember where we go from here. I have a feeling that we're going to head over to Mexico. I kind of want to fly to Cancun next. I hope that's what's in store, but we'll see. We're pretty close to that. So until then, catch you next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.